Welcome back. As a child, my next guest used to dance naked to Stravinsky's Rite of Spring. Later, he got himself discharged from the Navy by persuading the family doctor to certify him as mad. Subsequently, he was an electrician, a ballet dancer, an actor and amateur movie maker. Such were the beginnings of the man who became the cinema's most provocative director. Ladies and gentlemen, Ken Russell. <laughs> Ken, you've been turning the clock back a little, acting again, which means that you are yes. at the mercy of someone else's direction. Yeah, it's frightening. How's it been? Being, being directed, isn't it? Yes, very. How horrible. Was it yes. a salutary experience? Yes. Um, I almost got to like actors. Present company, etc. <laughs> um, it's an old Hitchcock joke, you know. Yeah. You know when you call an actor, don't you? Once an actor, always a horse's. <laughs> you had a way with words. Yes, yes. 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 But it's not true. Oh, I know. As I'm an actor. No, I, I know it's not true. I always thought it was true, but no, it isn't. How many takes They're do you human, have to like do other for people. your... Well, I, um, I was always having to do takes for other people. We, we acted in a great ensemble, so I was pretty well perfect most of the time, but uh, Sean Connery <laughs> wasn't quite up to it sometimes. <laughs> now, did you, and yourself, learn anything new about direction? Well, I, yes, I did, but in a sort of oblique way. I learned that... Um, you, a director really has to spend as much time with the actors as possible. Um, it's fine if you're a star, I mean, and you're in front of the camera the whole time, like Sean Connery was sort of in front of the camera all the time. But for us, us lesser mortals who, uh, you know, came and went and whatnot, it was a lot of sitting about in, in, in our trailers, you know, playing Scrabble in the rain. And I think if the director had come along, spared a few minutes and said, sorry, lads, uh, we've been held up, the camera's not working properly, so be patient. I know you were up at six this morning and I got you here and you've been sitting doing nothing for five hours, you know, it, it, but uh, bear with me. Well, he never did that and I never do it either. I was, but having been through that experience, I know that you've really got to make time. I mean, the director's at the hub of, you know, a wheel and, the, you know, the... the the bit part players are all on the outside, but they get rather despondent and um, they need encouragement. I mean, you must, you must, even as a star, you, you, I think one needs encouragement, you know, but to, you, to, to know that you're still there and you're waiting to mm. go on. And, well, you certainly have learned something. Yes. Now, you... Uh, I have... haven't put it into practice yet, though, but... <laughs> well, your future stars any, any time. can be reassured. Now, do you ever have actors tell you how to do things? Um... Well, they suggest things, yes. Um, I mean, I, there was a case where Oliver Reed, I, in Women in Love, the, oh, uh, there was um, a sequence where the, the two here, uh, were, Alan, uh, were Birkin, Alan Bates and Oliver Reed, have to r wrestle naked. And it's, uh, it's in Lawrence's book, it's in um, a stately home among suits of armour and God knows what, and I thought, well, that's rather ridiculous. So I set it by a riverbank at night, so I thought, well, that's much better. And I was eating my spaghetti one day at home quietly when there was a thundering at the door and um, it was Oliver and he said, um, open your puffy purple front door, I'll kick it in. <laughs> he said, I know you're in there, I can see you through the puffy lace curtains. <laughs> I thought, well, hold on. So I put the spaghetti under, the ta under two chairs under my wife and I put the spaghetti we were eating and invited him in. He said... Um, she says it's different in the book. And then he moved and there was a beautiful blonde behind him holding a copy of Women in Love. And he said, they fight in a, you know, in a room at the dinner table, just after dinner. And I said, well, it's impossible, you couldn't do it. He said, oh, yeah, well, come... Uh, do you really think so? I said, yeah. So he said, well, let's shake on it. And he shook and... And I was flying over the spaghetti, over the table, and <laughs> crashed on the floor. He said, see how natural it looks, but it's perfect. <laughs> I said, you know, we're just dressed, and uh, he said, let me help you up. And I, I said, OK. And he said, are you convinced? And I said, well, I can see the possibilities, but uh, I just think... Um, before I knew it again, I was flying across the... <laughs> I said, it sounds a really good idea. <laughs> where, do you, where do you draw the line, Sally? Um... What? Well, I've let, my lines keep changing as, as I get older and more experienced. I think when I was younger, as I was telling you before, I had no lines, and then they started to get fuzzy. And, but, but I remember I, I worked with a, a director named Irwin Allen, and I, 
and he he's probably a nice guy and everything, but he's he's not a director. And he it was a really horrible film in any case. And and he would sit up on a ladder and his the way he said action, we had all these lovely Michael Caine and Carl Malden and Shirley Knight and wonderful cast. And we were all sinking on a ship, actually, that was already sunk and we were trying to get out. And we and he would sit up on top of a ladder and shoot a gun three or four times in the end. Now, that was action. And we were supposed to respond to that. <laughs> which, you know, you respond to going, ah! You know? uh, and then another big action was the, the boat was always turning and tossing. And instead of getting a little set that, that you could move and, and have it be real, he would just yell, flail. This was most of his, <laughs> most of his direction was flail. Which we interpreted to mean, <laughs> and, and, and you know, Carl Malden's flail was very different from Michael Caine's, was very different from Shirley Nice. We could never get our flailing together. You know, no matter how much you study, flailing is never really down to a science. You know, I tried to find a way to fall into a box or something every time. Because you were laughing so hard, number one, you just, you couldn't. <laughs> how long were you acting in your earlier manifestation? Well, I was a dancer years. I, I couldn't get in into the films. It was very impossible to get into British films. It's still very, very difficult these days. Um, I know, darling. Especially, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. especially as they're mostly financed from Beverly Hills. There, aren't, there is no such thing as British films really, uh, anymore. It never was. Were you, um, any, were you any good? What? As, as uh, an actor? Done, uh, well, I was no good as a dancer, but I did mime, and I played this Dr. Capalius in Capalia, this very old sort of... And I based him on Dr. Caligari, one of these, you know, expressionist German films. And uh, I had to bring dolls to life. It was rather like directing actors, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Except it again. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, so, yes, so I was mime. I used big gestures and, and all this. And then, um, you know, but when I... Went. To, uh, I grew too old to dance at 26, yes. and too fat as well. Well, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I thought, well, I'll take up acting because I'd done the big gestures, and so I went to uh, the Garrick Players at Newton Popplefoot in South Devon, who were a little travelling group. They went round in a, a lorry and um, put on shows in village halls, and I had to play. There was a, a play called When Nights Were Bold, and I had to play a 40-year-old doctor. And so, a doctor again, you see, I thought, oh, Dr. Capalius. Well, to me, I was about 24 at the time. 40 was sort of an age, almost unimaginable age. And so I thought, well, how would a 40-year-old walk? Well, he'd, uh, he'd have probably one shoulder higher a bit than the other. <laughs> and he'd have this um, black... No teeth. So I blacked out all my teeth. I had a humpback. I thought... It's a little he, like he... you look today, in <laughs> 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 well, I was just going to act all that out. You've spoilt it. Oh, see, I'm so sorry. So, so. Us dolls sometimes can think ahead of you, of you directors. Oh, right. <laughs> I really do wish we'd work yeah, together. No, no. <laughs> Plenty of time. <laughs> and we'll have another break.